Hi, uh, I'm posting this video for a few reasons. Uh, a, based on my own reflections. B, based on some comments that uh, Girl Writes What made, and some readings I've done recently. And C, uh, probably most importantly, based on this um, Norwegian documentary film, uh, The Gender Equality Paradox. Um, and I'll post uh, a link to that uh, when, uh, at the bottom, and I strongly encourage everyone who watches this video, listens um, to this video, to watch that film. Uh, there are a whole bunch of them, actually, but this specific one, uh, it's fairly brief. It's just under 40 minutes, so anyway, and, uh, I'll post the link. Uh, but um, one thing this film did was basically to show that in societies that are allegedly, uh, I use their terms, most egalitarian, and you often have the Scandinavia, or particularly Norway, put at the forefront of this egalitarianism, um, what you actually end up getting, instead of e what, what some might perceive as equality, is um, natural tendencies in both sexes uh, at more amplified. In the film, I also discuss um, the fact that women in poverty-stricken countries are more likely to get into technical fields, far more likely to get into technical fields than uh, women in wealthy, uh, so-called gender-equal countries, such as Norway, Denmark, and what have you. And uh, I think there are a couple of consequences of this. Now, if the natural tendencies this film primarily focuses on, on work choices. So, for example, that women have the natural biological tendency to be much more interested in uh, social work and psychology, things that involve people, uh, whereas men are much more inclined to do jobs involved, involving physical labor, labor engineering, um, problem solving, uh, you know, essentially less people intense, as it were. And this is what this film focuses on. But um, I think it's safe to say that if our natural tendencies with regards to work choices are amplified uh, within a society that's allegedly egalitarian, basically where you have free reign as an individual to do what you want, there are further consequences to that. And, and some of those consequences... Uh, go beyond work choice, in my opinion. Um, if you think about it, for example, that if all natural tendencies, and I think it's safe to argue that, and I'll bring up what Girl Writes What had talked about, are amplified, then the natural t proclivity that, say, men have to favor and to pedestalize the female sex, to... Uh, Allow, allow women to cut corners, to uh, basically bestow favor upon them and treat them as quote-unquote special, will be even more amplified. Likewise, conversely, the female in such a society, and practically can name any, Westerns, any Western country, westernized, industrialized country, um, to take such a female, will have her own natural tendencies of self-entitlement, selfishness, and uh, grandiosity, likewise amplified. So it starts, you know, in the film, they only talk about the work choices. But what about the other consequences? The other consequences being very likely that in a society where you have free reign, the most natural, I'll call them bestial tendencies, will come to the fore. And this is something that girls write, Girl Writes What had talked about in um, this, I think I posted this as a response to her video, as a, um, she, she briefly talks about it towards the end of her video. She talks about, uh, and I'll talk about this as well, if social conservatism or so, conservative society is the attempt to restrain the beast within us, um, societies where we're free to be you and me, as it were, really exemplify the opposite, where you have essentially the reptilian mind, as she called it, gone wild. I mean, 
where ultimate freedom uh, results in the ultimate uh, pursuit of natural instincts and natural tendencies. And in pursuing those natural instincts and natural tendencies, you will end up uh, with essentially what we have now, a society that pedestalizes, reveres the feminine, the female, uh, allows her to cut corners everywhere, uh, and where she literally has free reign, in some cases, to even murder with little or no fear of punishment. And the man, the lowly man, uh, is punished for his very being. He's punished on a social level. He's punished financially um, in, in the legal system. And there's a general sense of just contempt for men um, as workhorses, workers, slaves, I guess, hunters as in, in previous times. You know, through their wooden spears at the mammoths and what have you. Well, uh, I think this could be very readily, based on the data that they did collect in this film, uh, read, very readily uh, related to the fact that in societies where there is total freedom, it's it's actually quite the opposite. Well, it is it is a total freedom, and what we do as human beings with our total freedom is that we uh, we amplify those freedoms or we really dig into our core and our core values and our core instincts and we express them to their utmost. On the other hand, you have uh, social conservatism uh, in all sorts of manifestations, be it religious or what have you. And that really to me seems, now I'm, I'm not favoring anything here, I'm just, uh, as, I'm not making a criticism of anything, I'm just simply saying that uh, socially conservative societies um, we'll take, I want to try to avoid religion as much, but we'll take Islam, which is seen by many, particularly feminists, as you know, very backwater and what have you. Uh, well, the fact is that any, be it religious or otherwise, any um, society that has these constraints, constraints uh, placed with, on women and men, of course, within the social, that social setting, that actually is an effort to tame the beast, um, and it's there for a reason. Um, and so, yes, there is more limited freedom, because I, I think at some stage in the game, humanity, and perhaps men indeed, I would suspect some men, realize that on some level, perhaps even subconscious, giving society, or rather women, free reign to do what they want has potential ramifications and is potentially very dangerous. Um, and whoever those men might have been, if such men had existed at some point in time, I think their thesis has been, has been proven correct. And we see that here. We see that in the current society we live in. Uh, I saw it tonight. Uh, now, not going to go off on a tangent here, but where I live, there's this stupid carnival holiday that's holiday uh, that's celebrated, and lots of drunk idiots, both men and women, running around and uh, making life difficult, especially when you're coming back from work and you just want to get home. Anyway, I had to take a taxi because you couldn't even take the underground or the um, tram or whatever. It was vomit everywhere. That's neither here nor there. Needless to say, I hate this holiday. But... Um, a woman, a reasonably attractive woman, um, pushed ahead of the queue. And I was the first guy she asked if she could go ahead of me. And she pushed all the way to the front. And I don't play that game anymore. So I said, in, under no circumstances can you do that. And she gave me this dirty, mean look as if I were an asshole for saying that. Um, and then the guy behind me, she asked, and smiled at him very coyly. And, of course, he yielded and caved in. Um, where am I going with this? Well, the point is that in a society where you have free reign, women will uh, exploit that, and men will be exploited without proper awareness. This is, uh, I mean, this is rampant. And so, yes, I agree with the Girl Rights Watch, and, you know, if you see in the film as well, uh, this is the reptilian mind gone wild. This is 
giving female all the accolades, all the rewards, none of the risks, while we uh, men uh, remain the workhorse slaves, uh, we're hated, held in contempt, we're rapists, we're criminals. Um, certainly our health isn't very important since uh, the important issues like prostate cancer, which are, you know, afflict more men, aren't nearly as heavily researched as, say, breast cancer. Or I, I don't know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna guess, but who knows what other kinds of, of female um, health issues like cervical cancer, I, I would be willing I'd be willing to bet that they probably put more research, I, I can't back it up right now, into that than other uh, than male-specific uh, illnesses as well. So this is actually what we end up with when there's free reign. Now, am I advocating with this the uh, going back to some sort of primitive uh, society where, you know, going back to essentially traditionalism? Not necessarily, no, I'm not. You know, because of philosophically I'm a libertarian, I don't think we should put cons uh, certainly state um, state based constraints on anyone. I think people should be, you know, essentially free to be themselves. Um, but if a consequence of living in a society such as this uh, is that all the negative uh, instincts, those ur instincts, as they say in German, the original or primal instincts, are amplified to the point where we end up with this total mess that we're in right now, there needs to be some kind of counter-reaction to that. And the counter-reaction, I would suggest, is constant awareness, constant vigilance, and acknowledgement of the facts. And once again, I cannot stress this enough, that we, we, we cannot afford to be ignorant of this stuff. So, for example, um, we might be inclined to say that, you know, hypergamous behavior on the part of females is the result of feminism. No, it's been amplified by feminism. But these traits are in women. Women are inherently self-centered. And I'm saying that right now, um, doing my best to say that without any negativity, just simply saying neutrally, that is the way they are. And being aware of that is important. And in a society where that self-centeredness as an, as an innate, essentially congenital trait of the females, amplified, men and, and, and men will be more exploited, they will be uh, more downtrodden, and men need to be aware of that, um, just as men need to be aware of female manipulation. Uh, most importantly, um, one thing I'd like to stress in this particular video is the fact that, and this is an excuse not on par with not on par with Nawalt or other uh, seem some deflections. This isn't really a deflection so much as a, a shrug your shoulders. Well, what are you going to do? And you'll hear this from both men and women. Uh, women and men will say, "Well, you know, that's the way women are. You know, it's, it's not their fault. They're just following their instincts." Admittedly, uh, it, it might not even be their fault. If if it's all instinct, well. That's neither here nor there. I mean, I think you can overcome instinct. I think I and well, many of us who are active in men's rights or have an interest in it have, are in effect, even as we speak, even as I make this video, overcoming our instincts. But I'd like to stress something that people overlook when they make that excuse. And that is that in terms of our ethics, in terms of the structure of our society, we live in a what I, one can only describe as a, consequential, a consequentialist ethical system. That is to say, the, the results of what happened, um, or a crime, for example, in a crime, what you do, the results of that crime are more important than, than the cause was. And the cause uh, contributes very little, uh, although it can in some cases, to the evaluation of the consequences of that crime. That's why I say we live in a consequentialist society. So you might have a genetic, who knows, a genetic... Uh, inclination to uh, being a, klepto, a kleptomaniac, um, I'm just making that up right now, uh, but if you steal enough things, uh, it, you're likely not going to have to be able to get off uh, scot-free for the simple reason that we live in a consequential society. Likewise, I would argue that in the case of female behavior, as innate, congenital, and primal as it might be, I do not think we need to or can afford to grant it a, feel, uh, a free pass, which we do constantly, mind you. 
um, because it feels so natural. Girl writes what stresses us all the time. She always says it feels so natural. It feels right. It feels right to give, to allow the, the, the pretty girl ahead of me to give, it wasn't me or the guy, in this case, the other guy, to give the, uh, to allow her to get ahead in the queue so she can get the taxi before her. It feels right. Um, now, this might sound like a rather crass analogy, but um, if you're attacked by a rabid animal or a rabid dog, you're in well within your rights to defend yourself. And uh, the rabies or whatever else uh, the animal might be suffering from might serve as a very plausible, uh, perfect explanation for its behavior. Maybe it's hungry, maybe it's scared, who knows? But the fact is that you still have a right to defend yourself. Um, and that's the way I see men's positions, uh, position here. I see men having the right to defend themselves, uh, well, essentially from uh, what we're dealing with is a wild animal following its instincts. Um, in terms of uh, explanation, yes, we can explain female behavior very readily. We have the evolutionary psychology on our side. We have the research. And the only question that remains after that is, what can we do to defend ourselves? Um, you know, just as you might, you know, the, a lion or some other you know, ferocious beast might be very hungry and uh, as a result you choose a weak human being uh, for a meal, um, you know, if you have the tools to defend yourself, even understanding the motivation of the lion, sickly and old or what have you, you, know, you have to defend yourself. Um, in fact, it's an issue of life or death. And I think the issue of men's rights is an issue of life or death. And I think we are in a war, not a war of, uh, of aggression per se, but certainly a war of information versus uh, misinformation. There's no doubt that uh, we who are involved and care about uh, men's issues are much more inclined to rely on factual information, A, because we're men, and B, because can't really refute the statistics, you can't refute facts, you can't refute um, things that have so have a large amount of scientific evidence supporting them. And as long as we have that on our side, and those things on our side, I think ultimately we might have some chance. Um, and as long as the other side involve, uh, constantly engages in deflection, um, well, that, that, that alone is evidence that they don't have, um, they don't have good arguments, um, and they certainly can't back up a lot of their claims. So, getting back to the original point, and then trying to finish off this, polish off this video, uh, because natural tendencies in, in a so-called free society are, are, are magnified, amplified a hundredfold, or who knows how, how many fold, but very much so, multiplied on a great grand scale, um, you're going to see a lot more of uh, power redistribution of wealth and influence directed towards the female because that is what we as a species do. We give power entitlement to the female. We uh, let them off all the time. We excuse their bad behavior because, yes, too many men worship pussy, worship females, and uh, many females don't even see anything wrong with this. Um, in a way, it's kind of a, it's kind of a mania. They, they're not even in a position to see any of this. But um, no, it's it's something it's something that needs to be addressed. This has to be addressed. And the reaction is not to return, you know, back to the times when we were living in tents in the desert and you know we lived in sort of tribal society because that's not going to happen anyway, it's to be aware and, and really be aware of the fact that you have the right to defend yourself against that because it is destructive of men um, living in a society like this. And if you yield to the natural instinct, either in you or to women's natural instincts or both, it will destroy you. It can literally destroy you. You can die, literally, as in some cases in violent relationships. Or you can um, be financially ruined, and uh, metaphorically speaking, um, you can lose your soul. And uh, that's not a good thing. So we need to be aware that in the freer the society is, 
the more our natural instincts will be amplified. And that means female selfish entitlement will be amplified, just as ma ma male sympathy towards that entitlement will be as well. And it needs to be constantly guarded against, and it has to be combated. And having said that, thanks for watching my video.